Now, um, what we want to do today is we want to specifically look into how we apply the basic, all the basic, basic concepts that we have gone through for the past few lectures and try to solve, look at how we apply principle of equilibrium and to solve a statically determinate problem. So today we are going to also look at what is the meaning of statically determinate problem and apply principle of equilibrium to solve the problem. So now I start with the principle of the, how the, we apply principle of equilibrium to solve a problem. First, you are given, if you are given a problem which is in the form of analysis model, then you need to draw normally, you need to draw a free body diagram. So please have a look at this diagram and this diagram. This is a free body diagram of this problem, which is a beam fixed here and a pin here with the point load here. So when you draw a free body diagram, remember it is a diagram without any of this support symbol and you replace the symbol correctly with the support here correctly with the information in the form of reaction forces. So pin two reaction forces, vertical, horizontal, fix three reaction forces, horizontal, vertical and there is a reaction moment. So this is free body diagram. And after that, we make use of this thing and you apply the principle of equilibrium in order to calculate all these forces, the red one. These are all the reaction forces. So these are the things that you have already learned and then apply these to solve problems when you have, when you go through EAS 152 and when you solve, especially when you solve beam problems to find the forces. So today, we are going to look further on this and before that, we are going to look at the type of structures that you are going to solve, which is statically determinate, and what is the definition of that? Okay. So, equilibrium equations. These are the things just uh, just to remind you. Equilibrium equations for 2D problems, for planar problems. So, when we mention planar problem, as we have discussed in the last lecture, you should know what is the meaning of planar problem. This is a 2D problem. Okay. So for planar problems, for each, each free body diagram that you can draw, there is only three. The most you can have is you have only three equilibrium equations for planar problems. But as you go on for real 3D problems, you have six. It's for planar problems, there are only three. So these are the three that you have learned and you should be familiar with. Summation of forces in x direction equal to zero. Summation of forces in y direction equal to zero. Let's say this is the x, this is the y. So the algebraic sum, so total forces in x direction should be zero. And all the forces in y direction should be zero. Which means going down should be balanced by going up. And going to the right should be balanced by going to the left. And the moment at any point... The moment, at, the moment at any point within the plane caused by this load or all the loads must be zero. So these are the only three that you have. Two for forces, one for moment. Okay, so this is uh, what I have mentioned just now. This is the meaning of free body diagram. So you re replace the structures with showing the, only the forces so showing only the forces acting on the structures. Okay, so in this diagram, free body diagram, you don't see this symbol anymore. Because you are replacing that with the forces. Okay, so remember these are the three. So how do we make use of these three? It depends on us. We can use this first, use this first, or use this one first, depending on the questions. But these are the only three. Okay? So this is the meaning algebraic sum of the x components of all the forces is zero. So you have to consider positive negative sign here. All the forces in the y component is zero. Algebraic sum of the y component. If this is your y, so if this is positive, so positive this 
plus negative of this plus negative of this must be zero. So that is the meaning. So algebraic sum means you have to consider the positive and the negative sign. Or you can put going down is equal to going up on this side. Here you can put going to the left is equal to the going to the right on this side. So I think this one is the basic one that every one of you is familiar with. And the third one is this is the one that uh, sometimes if you make mistake, this is the equation that you think tend to mistake tends to be made. Remember this is the algebraic sum of the moments. So remember what is moment, force multiplied with perpendicular distance for forces. And if it is a moment, moment like this, so this, this moment will appear in all the equations. It doesn't matter which point you take. So this third equilibrium equation is the algebraic sum of the moments of all of the forces about any point in the plane of the structures. So it can be any point in that plane. This point, that point, that point, any point that we want. And the moment. Okay. So do not forget also the moment. Moment caused by the forces is force multiplied perpendicular distance. If you want to take moment at this point, so moment caused by this load is this multiplied with this distance. And for this is this multiplied with this distance with different sign. If this is clockwise, this becomes anticlockwise. And also don't forget this moment. So, algebraic sum of the moments of all the forces about any point in the plane and the moment. And the moment. You must don't, do not forget that moment because sometimes we tend to forget this moment of any couple acting on the structure is zero. So, these are the basic things and we will see how we apply this. So, now I want to first refresh you with some free body diagram. This is an example, go through this example, this, this is a pin, this is a roller with a point load here. Example 2, this is a, something looks like a frame, this is big, this is pin, but there is a connection here which is pin. And this is a frame problem, this is a frame where you have horizontal member, vertical member, so fix, fix, pin, roller. So, just use this to show to go through how we draw free body diagram. Now when we want to draw free body diagrams, we have to first uh, decide free body diagram of, of what that we want to draw. So the first one we draw free body diagram of the whole beam. Free body diagram of the whole beam. So this is pin, so two reaction forces. Roller, one reaction forces. The directions of the reaction forces is this is a support, so this is a roller, it can move like this, so the reaction force is perpendicular to this supporting plane. So this is a direction, so going up or going down, it doesn't matter, it is up to us to decide. If your assumption of going up is wrong, then you get your answer negative. If this one should be going up, you put the sign going down, you get answer negative. So it doesn't matter if you don't like going up, so you put it going down. The same thing here. And hence the same thing for this, going to the left, going to the right. If you don't like this direction, you change it and you get your answer negative if the direction is wrong. The most important thing is that it must have one here, vertical, here two, y direction, here x directions. So this is where you make use of this uh, the knowledge that this is a pin support, there must be two reaction force. When you do calculation, you get this one zero. But remember, at the pin, there are two. But because of the loading, there is no horizontal component. You do calculation, you get AX zero. Yeah, but at the pin support, there is always two. Fix, always three. Roller one. So this one, we draw free body diagram of the whole beam. And the next example is, now we want to draw a free body diagram, we separate them. This is a one member inclined connected to this member horizontal with the pin connections. So we can always separate this. Now let's say we want free body diagram of this part and this part. We want to draw them. So this is how we draw them. 
So we separate them, separate them, and when you separate something which is together, you have forces appearing there. So here, this is fixed support, AX, AY. There are three reaction forces at these pin connections. Pin connections, there's a pin connections. When we separate them, there are always two. We have two forces here. These are the forces acting at the pin and one horizontal direction, one vertical direction. And on this side, on this side, when you draw a free body diagram here, so on this side, this is a pin. So you have two reaction forces. This is our X, this is our Y. So one X, one Y. And at this connection here, remember, this and this, they are together. They are actually together in the structures. When they are together in the structures, so when you have these reaction forces that you draw for this free body diagram in these directions, and this is in this direction because they are together. So when you draw on this side, it must be in opposite directions. So if Bx on this free body diagram is in this direction, Bx on this free body diagram must be opposite to this, but in the same horizontal direction, but opposite. The same thing for By. So By is going down. So on this side, because they are actually together, so this By going down, this must be going up. If you put here going this way, so this one must be going opposite. If you draw here going up, so this one must be going down. So these are the important things that uh, when you draw free body diagram, when you uh, separate them at a pin. Because they are they're actually together. So when you combine them, this one and this one balance, this one, this one and this one balance each other, this one balance each other. They, can, they balance each other, that's why you have to put it in opposite direction when you separate them here. So this is drawing free body diagram separate. Okay, so the next one we can draw free body diagram any parts that we want. We want free body diagram of this part. We want free body diagram of this part. We want free body diagram of this part. So you can separate them. This is a support, this is a roller support. So when you cut, remember when you cut through any sections in the 2D structures, you have internal forces. So the force appears. So here, when you cut through here, in any sections acting on the section in a planar problem, there will be three internal forces. When you cut through here, or cut through here, or cut through here, then on that section, you have three internal forces for 2D structures. So you have the horizontal one, which is the axial force, the vertical one, which is a shear force, and this moment, which is the bending moment. So there are three. So in general, forces acting on the section, so when you cut, when you don't cut, you don't see. When you cut them, you see. Section acting, forces acting on a section in a planar problem consists of normal force. Normal force is the force, this is axial force here. The direction is perpendicular to the section. That's why it is called normal force. Shear force, this is a shear force. Direction is parallel to the section and bending more. So when you cut here, the same thing like what we did previously. When you cut here, this is actually together. So the forces here and the forces here, they are acting in the same, they are acting in opposite direction. So here, if you have this one going up, so this side coming down, this one comes here, this one goes there. And the moment, if this is counterclockwise, this becomes clockwise. So this is the, the things that we have to pay attention when you draw free body diagram when you cut through the structures. There are always three forces. There are always three there. And then the direction at that section there must be opposite to each other. Same thing here, this one and this one. Horizontally opposite, this one vertically opposite direction. And this one, this is counterclockwise, this becomes clockwise. So that because they are actually together, when they join together, they cancel each other. This one 
balance this, this one balance this, this one balance that. So, because they are actually the same section. So remember, when you cut through a section in a in the 2D problems, you have in general three, three internal forces. But some of these might be zero. Some of these might be zero, but in general you have three. So if I cut through here just to show you again, there must always be three internal forces. So I stand here, you cannot see me now. Okay. You have three internal forces. Always three. When you cut through a section in a 2D problems. But some of these forces might be zero. Okay? But in general, the you will have three here, but depending on the structure, depending on the problem, this might be zero, this might be zero, so the only non-zero one might be the actual force. For example, in your truss, when you learn truss later, the pin-jointed truss, one of the topics that you are going to learn, this one becomes zero, this one becomes zero. So the only forces which is non-zero is this actual force. But remember, in general, when you cut through, there will be three. Normal force, act shear force, the bending force. Okay? So this is the same thing. There will be always three. Doesn't matter, you cut it here, you cut it there. So this is, if you cut here, this is the three body diagram. Previously, if you cut here, this is a three body diagram. You have gone through the, the three basic, all the basic things, equilibrium. And the most important thing, free body diagram. How do you draw free body diagram? When you draw free body diagram, you have to know what type of reaction, what type of support, and for that type of support, how many reaction forces. And after that, once you have the analysis model, once you have this, then you can use the three equilibrium equations, the three equilibrium equation, and try to solve all the forces. So uh, when you try to answer this, I will, uh, I have, I will collect this. Okay. First one, this is because this is for you to try out, see whether you understand how to draw free body diagram. The first one. So this is a structure. This is a frame structures. Frame structures with all the loading, all the loading acting here. This is a. Uh, linearly distributed, this is uniformly distributed and this has a height and this support is a pin support, this is a roller support. Okay, so this is a problem given to you and I, I want you to draw, there are two parts here for the frame, this is a frame structure shown in figure one, draw the free body diagram, okay, FBD is free body diagram, four, they are now when you want to draw a free body diagram, it, we have to know free body diagram of which part that we want to draw. So the first thing is the whole structure. Draw a free body diagram of the whole structures. So, so in your answer, you should draw this and then indicate all the forces acting on that structure, the whole structures, which is this, this everything here. This member, this everything. So remember free body diagram, there will be no, don't draw anymore the support symbol, but replace that with the support reactions. So that is the first part. The second one is portion B, D, C, E of the frame. So remember free body diagram, it depends on what we want to analyze. It's not necessary we want to draw the whole structures, we can draw part of it. So which part? Part B, D, C, E, this one, B, D, C, E, this part. Okay, we want to draw this part only. The first one, though, everything. Part B, only this part. Okay. So when you want to draw this everything, and you want to draw B, D, C, B, so what? and what, how will be the free body diagram looks like? So please draw it out, the first part, the whole, 
whole frame. The second one, part of it. Part of it. Now, this is a, a truss, a three-pin truss, a three-pin arch problem. So, the member is curved. So, now, for the three-pin arch, this is the three-pin arch. One pin here, one pin, one pin at the center. Draw the free body diagram for part A, B only of the arch. So, the first one, uh, this one, you, you are not asked to draw the whole thing, but you are asked to this part only, A, part, part A and B only. So, part A and B only draw the free body diagram for portion A, B of the arch. So, your diagram should be only this half only and show all the forces acting on that free body diagram, part of it only. Only one part of it, not the whole structures, part A, B. I think the first one, uh, the first one, everybody shouldn't have any problem because this is the whole structure that you have to draw. So free body diagram for the whole structures. You have A support C. So the most important thing is you have to indicate correctly how many support reaction there. This is an X. This is a Y. And at A, we represent this as A Y A X. This to show that this is horizontal. This is vertical at point A. At C. This is a roller, only one reaction force. So this is a free body diagram for the whole structures. The free body diagram for one part only, when there is only one part, you have to cut. You have to do the cutting. So when you do the cutting, you have to cut here. Cut somewhere very close to the joint there. Cut there and draw this part. This is the free body diagram. This is a free body diagram when we cut it. So, because you have to draw B, D, C, E, so we cut somewhere here at the close to the joint. Eh? And when you cut here, remember you have three forces. So, when you cut here, three forces will appear. This is still the same reaction forces, only one. This is a loading acting. So, when you are asked to draw B, D, C, E only, not, not part of the structures, so you have to do cutting. You have to do cutting and when you cut, when you cut, remember when you cut, you will have three internal forces, three. So you have to draw the three internal forces here at the section where you cut. You can also cut here. Uh, if you don't, want, don't like cutting joint at this, you can cut also there. You can cut also there, that will be the same. Okay. So, this is the point that you have to remember when you cut, draw part of it, you have to cut. So, when you cut through, there are three internal forces. Any question on this? When you cut through here? So, the Third one, the one that you have to draw is this is for the for the three pin three pin arch problem three pin arch. So when I cut through here, so half only, I cut it only part A and B. So this is an X, this is a Y. So this is a pin support. So A X and A Y. This is a loading. This is a loading here, and this is a pin joint. This is a pin joint. So when you cut through a pin joint, so there is only two reaction. There are only two forces here. There is no moment. At the pin joint, there is no moment, only horizontal reaction forces and vertical forces, Bx and By. So this is the free body diagram that you should draw. And this is a free body diagram that you should draw for part 
A and B. Okay. So this is a exercise for you to know when you draw a free body diagram, it depends on which part you want to draw. Whole structure, part of it, it can be only one joint of the, it can only be one joint of the structures. So when you have to draw part of it, you need to do cutting. When you do cutting, remember when you cut, you have internal forces appear. We have internal forces appear. Any questions before I go to the next, before I proceed? Now to do that, we look at this problem. This is a very simple problem. Let's look at this problem and uh, we want to solve this problem. Meaning that we want to find the reaction forces and we want to find all the bending moment and shear force and uh, displacement. So to solve this problem, to solve this problem, we draw a free body diagram. You draw the free body diagram. So this is a free body diagram of this problem. So this is a pin support, this is a roller support, this is X and Y, so B, there is only one reaction forces, and A, there are two. And there is a load here, 10 kN. So if you want to find this, if you want to look for all the reaction forces, how many reaction forces are there? Three. One, two, three. So in a problem like this, how many equilibrium equation do you have? Three. So you have this equilibrium equation you solve for this. You have this, you can get this, and then finally you get you use you make use of this. You make use of this, you can solve for AY. Once you get AY, you substitute back, you get BY. So you have three forces that you do not know, that you want to calculate, and you have three equilibrium equations. So three unknown, three equations, you can solve this. You can solve this. So this is a problem where the number of unknown, the number of unknown forces, one, two, three, is equal to number of equilibrium equation, one, two, three. Three equal to three. So three unknown forces, three equilibrium equations. Next, we come to this. We change this to a fixed support here. So when you change the fixed support, so you have Reaction forces, three here. This one here. So how many reaction forces now? Four. How many equilibrium equations? Three. Still three. Is there is no increase in equilibrium forces, uh, equilibrium equations. So if you try to solve this, for example, you start with this, you, you get AX zero. You can solve some of them. AX equal to zero, still the same. Next, you come to summation FY. You still get the same equations. But then you, you take summation moment at A, summation moment at A, okay? Now you get extra MA coming out in this equation, so you get MA is equal to 6AY minus 30. So you have already used all the three equilibrium equations, no more. But you still cannot solve for all the forces because you still don't know what is AY. If you know AY, then you can know MA, you can know BY. But there is no more equation to be used. So you cannot solve this. You cannot solve this. If you try it the other way, you don't believe this, you don't believe me, you try it the other way. So now you get by 10 minus ay. Okay, this one you take moment at a. You take moment at a, you get this equation. Okay. Now you try to take moment at b. Okay, you, I have. To, I have three equilibrium equations, but I can also take moment at I take moment at A, take moment at B, take moment at C, take moment at D, take moment at F, F A, B, C, D, E, F, G until X, Y, Z. Any point you want to take, still you cannot solve this because this is the only three equilibrium equations: summation forces x zero, summation forces y zero, summation moment at any point zero. These are the only three. So if you try to take you say, I already use summation moment at A, so I have, I can create another one, summation moment at B. Take moment at B. You try this and see, you end up with the same equations. You take moment at C, take moment at any point, you end up with the same equations. 
So, meaning that the equilibrium equation that you have is only three, and moment equilibrium equation, once you use, you cannot use it anymore because you already use that equation. So, if you, that's why what happened, you say, I take moment at A, I take moment at B, another one equation, I have four equations. But if you try that, you end up with the same equation, meaning that you still cannot solve this. Because the equilibrium equations for this free body diagram is only three. Only three. Summation forces in X, zero. Summation forces Y, zero. Summation moment at any point, zero. So that is the only three. But unknown forces, there are four. You cannot solve them. So this kind of problem, where the number of unknown forces is more than the number of equilibrium equation that we have, where as a result, you cannot solve for all the forces. This is called statically indeterminate problem. Statically indeterminate means you cannot solve for all the unknown forces by using only equilibrium equations. You have to make use of other equation which is not equilibrium equations. Okay. So that is the meaning of statically indeterminate problems. In ES25, you will solve this kind of problems. In ES254, you solve this kind of problem. But here, we have to make it clear, you are solving all statically determinate problems, so you have to know what is the meaning of statically determinate problem. Okay, so this is the explanation. For equilibrium equation, we have only three. For one free body diagrams, for one free body diagrams, let's look at this. The most you can have is three. If you cut here, then this, you get this part. For this part, you can write three equilibrium equations. Then if you cut through here, you can have three equilibrium equations. So any of the free body diagram that you draw for any particular free body diagram, for planar problems, there is only three equilibrium equations. These three. Okay? So this one, you have the unknown forces, the whole structure, one, two, three, equilibrium equation three. So you can solve for all the forces. This is called statically determinant. This one, one, two, three, four. You have four unknown forces, equilibrium equation only three. So this is called statically indeterminate. So statically indeterminant, meaning that you cannot solve for all the unknown forces using only statics, using only equilibrium equation is not enough. You need extra equation. So this is the definitions. And whether this is statically determinate or statically indeterminate, we call determinacy of the structures. So if all unknown forces, including reactions and internal forces, the forces that we want to know, can be determined by using only equilibrium equations, then that structure is called a statically determinate structure. A structure where the number of unknown forces is more than the number of equilibrium equations is called statically indeterminate. So, and whether a structure is statically determinate or statically indeterminate, we call that the determinacy of the structures or the determinacy of the problems. So when we want to check determinacy, meaning that we have to decide whether the structure is statically determinate or statically indeterminate. So that is the meaning of statically determinate and statically indeterminate. In 253, we will concentrate only on this type of problem. And in 254, we will solve this type of problem. Statically. And okay, now, we put it in, in, a, 
equations. Uh, we put in equations. So let alpha is number of unknown forces. Beta, number of equilibrium equations. So, so if number of unknown forces equal to number of equilibrium equations statically determinant. If number of unknown forces is more than number of equilibrium equations statically indeterminate. So, the meaning of alpha, meaning of beta, number of unknown forces, number of equilibrium equation. If this equal to this, statically determinant. If this is more than this, meaning that unknown forces more than number of equilibrium equations, we get statically indeterminate. So, this is uh, using equation to represent how do you check. How do you determine? So you have to find out what is alpha. Alpha equal to 3, alpha equal to 4, so alpha equal to 5, how many of them? And how many equilibrium equations do you have? And compare them. If this equal to this, so the conclusion is statically determinate. If this is more than this, statically indeterminate. Okay. We are using alpha and beta because uh, you can also use other symbols omega or gamma if you want, but the important thing is we use alpha to represent number of unknown forces. Unknown forces equal to number of equilibrium equations, then statically determinate. If unknown forces more than that, statically indeterminate. And in our lectures, we use alpha for this, beta for this. Okay. And if if this is more than this, if this is more than this, then the difference of this, which is alpha minus beta, is called degree of statical indeterminacy. Yeah, this is more, for example, 4 minus 3, 3 is equal to 1. 1 is called the degree of statical indeterminacy. It's called the degree of statical indeterminacy. For statically indeterminate structures, the degree of statical indeterminacy is zero because this is equal to this. Only when you have this is more than this and this minus this, it is a positive number, okay, a positive number. Then that number is called degree of statical indeterminacy. So example, give you example. Here alpha is equal to six. So when you want to count how many you draw free body diagram. You draw free body diagram of these one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. You can count that. Nowadays you can use your smartphone to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So you don't have to use your finger. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I use this in my case I use this point. One, two, three, four, five, six. But when you solve your problems, you use your smartphone. You, your smartphone has touch light. Your smartphone has touch light. Right? Your smartphone has a laser function. Like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. You count this. So, when you want to count, you have to draw your free body diagram. So, that's why free body diagram is important. Now imagine you draw a free body diagram wrongly, so you count wrongly. At the end, your alpha is wrong. So this alpha is equal to 6. Where do you get this 6 from? From this free body diagram. Beta, how many beta? 3. Beta is, remember, number of equilibrium <coughs> equation. Only if for any one free body diagram that you draw, there is only 3. So 3. But this 6 is greater than 3, so this is statically indeterminate. And the degree of statical indeterminacy, alpha minus beta, is equal to 3. Okay? Now, alpha minus beta is positive number. Do not 3 minus 6 become negative. It must be 6 minus 3. Okay? Must be a positive number, this number. So 6 minus 3. The next one is, okay, now, this example is to show to you that, now this is, 
we have looked at this way. Okay? Now, the next example is the same thing. It's the same thing I want to show you. So this, based on this, you make conclusion this is statically indeterminate. Next, you can always cut this. You cut this. You cut this beam. So when you cut this beam, you get two parts. You get one part here, one part here. Okay? And you count how many unknown forces for these two parts. This is the same beam problem, but you cut them into two. So you count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Is that correct? Twelve? No, this is not twelve. These are the same. This is the same as this. This is the same as this. This is the same. Because once you know this, you know this. Only the direction opposite. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You have 9 unknown forces when you cut this. So when you cut this, you get extra 3 coming out. So how many equilibrium equations that you have now for this? 3. And this one, 3. So in total, 3 plus 3, you get 6. Okay. So if you cut this, you get more equilibrium equation. But at the same time, you get more unknown forces. So the result is still the same. This is still statically indeterminate. And the degree of statical indeterminacy is still 3. So what I want to say here is, you can cut as many as you want. You can cut, you don't like cut here, cut here again, so you have more equilibrium equations. So each part that you cut, you have three, three. If you cut here again, then three, three, cut here again, three, three. So one, two, three, four, four times three, you have 12. But when you cut here, remember you have internal forces coming up. So at the end, if you cut here again, you cut here again, you do the same thing. You still find this is statically indeterminate. And the degree of statical indeterminacy is still the same. Okay. So, that is how we check for statical determinacy. For this problem, it is 3. It doesn't matter how many times you cut, you still get the same answer. Now, you look at this problem. You look at this problem here. This is the same thing as this, but there is a pin here. There's a pin here. So here we make conclusions. How many alpha? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Beta, number of equilibrium equation, this whole thing, there is only three. So you make conclusion, this is statically indeterminate. Degree of statical independency is equal to three. Now, I separate here. Now I separate this and the pin here. I separate this as the pin there. So this is a free body diagram, this is a free body diagram. So here in this case, how many unknown forces? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You have 8 unknown forces. And how many equilibrium equations? You have two parts now. One, there is 3, the other one 3. So 3 plus 3 becomes 6. So still alpha greater than beta, but the degree of statical determinacy becomes 2. This is 3, this is 2. So it cannot be like this. The same structures cannot have, depending on how you solve it, you get different conclusion. That is, cannot be, it is not correct. So you get 3 here, you get 2 here. So which one is the correct one? 3 is the correct one. Everybody agree 3 is the correct one? Everybody agree 3 is the correct one? Yes? Okay. The correct one is not 3. Correct one is 2. Okay, for this particular problem. Okay. So now, I would like you to be clear why 3 is not correct. Now if you compare this problem 
and this problem, the difference between this and this is that here you have a pin joint, a pin joint. Okay? Whenever you have a pin joint, whenever you have a pin joint in the structures, not at the support, okay? when you, whenever you have a pin joint at the structures, you have extra, you get extra equilibrium equations. You get extra equilibrium equations because of the pin joint, because of the pin joint. And that extra equation is at the pin joint, the moment is zero, so you got one extra equation there. And that extra equation is the equilibrium equations. So if I come back to this, so this one, you have beta is equal to 3 is for the whole structures. Beta is equal to 3 is for the whole structures. But for this problem where you have an internal hinge like this, then you get one extra equilibrium equation where the moment is zero at the pin joint. So you have one extra equilibrium equation, 1 plus 3, you get actually 4 here. You get 4 equilibrium equations. 3 coming from the whole structures. We know that for the whole structures, the whole free body diagram, there is only 3. But in this problem, it's different than this because of this thing here, there is one extra equilibrium equation. So equi equilibrium equation that you have now become 3, become 3 plus 1, which is 4. So beta is 4, alpha is equal to 6, 6 minus 4, you get 2. So this is the correct one. Okay. This is the correct one. Now we will uh, get further again uh, on this. Okay. Now here, look at this. Now, this one is how many reaction forces, how many unknown alpha? 1, 2, 3, 4. For these whole structures, Equilibrium equation is only 3. So we make conclusion 4 minus 3 because this is more than this, statically indeterminate. Alpha minus beta equal to 1. Alpha minus beta equal to 1. Next, to do the same thing, I cut here. You cut here. So you have two parts now. So how many unknown forces when you cut extra 2 come out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so you get 6. Now beta, how many beta do you have? One part you have 3, the other one you have 3, 3 plus 3 becomes 6. So now it becomes statically determinate, this is indeterminate. So one way of counting becomes statically, one way of checking you get this result, the other way you get this result, so obviously it is something wrong here. You cannot have the same structures depending on the mood. It becomes statically de indeterminate. This one becomes statically determinate. Okay, there is only one solution, one answer. And the correct answer is statically determinate. This is statically determinate. Okay. So, from these two problems, I want to show highlight the point that whenever you have this pin joint in between the structures, not at the support, then you have to consider this. It gives you one extra equilibrium equation. So the correct answer is this. This is, this is statically determinant. So now this is for for structure with hinge joint, hinge joint, existence of the hinge joint must be considered in the checking of statical determinacy. So when we want to check statical determinacy, we have to take this into consideration. When for problems where there are hinge joints. Okay? And one way of doing this is you separate the structures. So whenever there is a hinge, you separate the structure at the hinge there. In this case, separate the structure into two parts. 
before you carry out the checking. So you consider these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight unknown forces. Now, how many equilibrium equation? Because you have two parts, three and three, six. So this is the thing that we have to be aware of. Whenever there is a hinge joint, you have to take that hinge joint into consideration. One way is you cut this here and you count how many internal, how many forces as a result of this cutting and because you cut, these have three equilibrium equations, you won't have three, so three plus three, it becomes six. Then you compare the alpha and theta. Okay. So that is one of the things that you have to be aware of. So now I want to highlight this uh, this point that you need to know at a hinge joint here at a hinge joint when you draw a free body diagram you see there is only two forces but at if it is not hinge joint if you cut here if you cut here then you have in general three internal forces one two and three but when the joint become a hinge here so this moment is zero, and you have only two, when you have only two, okay? And this moment becomes zero, this moment, which is cut, if you cut through here, you get moment zero. But if you cut through at the hinge here, you cut here, you cut there, then you get, you compare this and this, this moment doesn't appear here because this is a hinge joint, there is no moment there. So that condition is being used in the evaluation of when you do checking of statical determinacy. Moment is zero. So moment zero gives you one equilibrium, one extra equilibrium condition that we can make use of for structure where there is internal hinge. Okay? So that is the important thing that we need to know about structures with hinges. Now, because initially we made use of this for checking, okay, alpha and alpha is equal to beta, alpha number of unknown forces, beta number of equilibrium equations. Now we look at the same, the similar equation, but a different way where you have to cut them. When you cut them, so we have here, for planar structure, there is at most three equilibrium equations for each structure or elements of structures. When you cut the structures, you have different parts. So each part, when you cut them, when you draw a free body diagram, you have three equilibrium equations. So there are three equilibrium equ equations for each structure or element of a structure or part of a structure. Now if we represent this NR, NR number of rigid members or parts. NR means number of rigid members or parts. That this is for the problem where you, you cut the structures into different parts. If you cut the structures into two parts, you get an R is equal to two. R is a number of unknown forces, including forces and moments. Okay. So I will have to stop for a while because we will continue this coffee break. So that one is uh, up to thinking of. Okay, now let's look at this slide here. You have, this is, we want to write down the, the checking in using equation in another way. Where this is for the case when you have to divide your structures into different parts, when you need to cut it. So, we use the symbol NR to represent number of rigid members. How many parts do you cut them? into how many free body diagrams that you have and R is number of unknown forces how many non unknown forces that we count in total so if this number of unknown forces is equal to number of equilibrium equations and R multiply with 3 why we multiply with 3 why do we multiply with 3 not 2.5 not 2.9 not 4, not 5, why 3? 
because 3 is the equilibrium equation that we have for each part. So if you have two parts, then 3 minus 2, you get total 6. That's why 3 and R. So this is unknown forces. This is number of to total number of equilibrium equations. If unknown forces is the same as the number of equilibrium equations, then it is statically determinate. So this is similar to alpha. This is similar to beta. But here, beta, we represent this as 3 multiplied with nr. Because for this, for cases, some cases, you divide the structures into different parts. So for each part, you have three equilibrium equations. So the total number is 3 multiplied with nr. And if alpha greater than beta, or r greater than 3 and r, you get statically indeterminate. And the difference between this and this is called degree of statical indeterminacy. And we put here IE, sometimes you look at IE here, this is referring to when we cannot solve the forces that you cannot solve. If the forces that you cannot solve is reaction forces, then we call them degree of statical, degree of external statical indeterminacy. It's one when we look at the problems, we will highlight this. There's an I here and there's a subscript E here. E means external. So in certain problems, we cannot solve the forces and the forces that we cannot solve is reaction forces. And in that cases, we call them degree of external statical indeterminacy. That is the meaning of subscript E here. So when we come to the problem, we will highlight this part again. So, so this is another way of, of classifying whether the structure is statically determinate or statically indeterminate by using R and 3 and R instead of alpha and beta. But they are actually the same thing. You have to remember R is number of unknown forces. 3 and R is number of total number of equilibrium equations. If unknown number of unknown forces is the same as number of equilibrium equations that you have, then statically determinate. If R number of unknown forces is more than total number of equilibrium equations that you have then statically indeterminate. So that is the main thing that you have to be aware of and how to get this you have to draw free body diagram. And when you have statically indeterminate remember R minus 3 and R or the difference between the number of unknown forces and the number of equilibrium that equation that you have is called degree of statical indeterminacy. So when you have this type of structures, then you have to calculate this one. For statically determinate, this IE equal to zero. For statically indeterminate, this one will be e this one will be equal to more than one. This one will be equal to uh, more than one. It can be one, two, three, four, and five, depending on the problem. So to give you one example of how we apply that equation, so this is R. Here we separate these structures into two at the pin joint there. So the NR is equal to NR is equal to two. So three NR, which is actually equal to beta, is equal to three multiplied with NR because you count, you separate this into two parts, so NR is becoming two, so it is six. So number of unknown forces, which is alpha, 1, 2, 3, because you cut here, extra 2 appear. Extra 2 appear. This is a pin joint. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So R become 8. So you compare R and 3 and R or compare alpha and beta. This is greater than this, so statically indeterminate. And the degree of statical indeterminacy, which is 8 minus 6, become 2. So this number here, the 2 is, what is the meaning of this 2? It represents number of unknown forces which cannot be determined by using only equilibrium equations. 
So if we have statistical determinacy, uh, statistical indeterminacy two, which means there are two forces that you cannot determine. If there are five, three you can determine, but two you cannot determine, and you need extra equations. It also represents how many number of extra equations that you need. Extra equations, which is not equilibrium equations. Equilibrium equation, you have used up everything, but still you cannot solve all the unknown forces. You need extra equations. And then extra equations, how many do you need? It is equal to the statistical indeterminacy. If statistical indeterminacy is equal to one, you need one extra. If statistical indeterminacy equal to two, you need the two extra equations. So that is the, the meaning of this, the meaning of statistical indeterminacy. So this is a few examples that we want to go through. So this is example of statically determinant structures. And uh, this one, statically determinant or indeterminate? Determinant. This one also, how many reaction forces? One, two, three, equilibrium equation three. This one, how many reaction forces? One, two, three, equilibrium equation, they are also three. So these are all statically determinant. Three, 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 Equilibrium equation 3, these are all statically determinant. And this one, also, this is a roller, roller, roller. So how many external reaction forces? 1, 2, 3. This one, 1, 2. If you look at this truss here, so this is a cable. So this cable, this cable will be pulled and there is a force pulling the truss. So you consider this as one unknown forces acting on the truss. So one force, one, two, this is a pin support, so one, two, three. So these are all statically determinant. So one, two, three, three equilibrium equations, one, two, three. This is coming from this cable here. So they are all statically determinant structures. So, when you want to determine this, you have to draw a free body diagram. So, you have to know drawing the free body diagram. In this case, so count how many unknown forces. These forces, which is acting on the truss, and these two from the support, so one, two, three. So, this roller, roller, one, two, three. So, this free body diagram, you must know how to draw, so that you know how many unknown forces are there. The next one, I look at this. This is an example of statically indeterminate structures. So this is four reaction forces. So this is four reaction forces, six reaction forces. So they are all statically indeterminate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Equilibrium equation only three. So you have. These are all statically indeterminate. Next one here, you have this truss. One, two, three, four, five. Five reaction forces. One, two, three, four, four reaction forces. Fix, fix, six reaction forces. So they are all statically indeterminate. Because equilibrium equation, there are only three. Now, I would like to point out this uh, about this these terms here, externally, statically, indeterminate. We have seen here, this is externally, statically, indeterminate. Also here. So, here, the terms here is being used externally, statically, indeterminate because the forces that we have here, there are four reaction forces. They are, you say, correct, there are four. So, I give the, so if you say three, then the bell is Three reaction forces. Four reaction forces. The bell doesn't ring. Okay. So external means when you say externally statically indeterminate means the forces that the unknown forces that you cannot determine 
is the reaction force. So here we have four reaction forces. We can determine three, but one we cannot. Okay, once we get, if we did, can determine the extra one, then the rest we can determine. The same thing here. We have four reaction forces. Equilibrium equation only three. There is one that we cannot solve. And this is the same thing here. Six reaction forces. There is one that we cannot solve. Uh, there is three equilibrium equations, so three we cannot solve. And all these forces that we cannot solve, they are reaction forces. So when the forces that we cannot solve, they are reaction forces, we call them statically, externally, statically indeterminate. Same thing here. Here we have reaction forces 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Equilibrium equation 3, so there are two forces that we cannot solve and there are the reaction forces. The same thing here, one we cannot solve, they are from the reaction forces. This one 6, 3 equilibrium equation only, we cannot solve 3. So, and the forces that we cannot solve, they are all reaction forces. And in this case, we call them externally statically indeterminate. So, externally, statically indeterminate means the forces that we cannot solve here is the reaction forces. Because later on in ES254, you will see that although we can solve the reaction forces, we cannot solve the problem because there are some forces, which is internal forces that we cannot solve. So, at this at this. For this example, we use the words externally, statically, indeterminate. So externally means the forces that we cannot solve, they are reaction forces. So that is the meaning when we use externally, statically, indeterminate. All these are externally, statically, indeterminate. Now, I want you to check this, whether these three simple structures, you continue with the, you continue with the uh, answers that you have, uh, the, you continue writing your answer on the question that you have solved for exercise one so that you can submit together. This one is asking you to determine Check for statical determinacy. So, well, it's a bit small here. Is it? For the structures shown in figure 1a, 1b, and 1c, check the corresponding statical determinacy. When you're asked to check the statical determinacy, check uh, the corresponding statical determinacy means you have to determine whether it is statically determinate or statically indeterminate. And if it is statically indeterminate, you have to indicate what is the degree of statical indeterminacy. So that is the meaning of checking. Check the corresponding statical determinacy. So this problem, so this is a fixed roller and roller, and there is a fixed and next one is this, uh, like a frame structures, fixed, fixed, and there are two pin there, two joint, two hinge joint, fixed, fixed, and two hinge joint. So is this statically determinate, statically indeterminate? If it is statically indeterminate, what is the degree of statical indeterminacy? So this is what I would like you to check, to answer. And the third one is an arch. So fix here, pin here, and there is a pin joint here. So two pin, this is pin support, fix support, and there's a pin joint. So please check, please decide whether each one of these is statically determinate or indeterminate. If it is statically indeterminate, what is the degree of statical indeterminacy?
So remember, in your answer, you should you should show you should also uh, show how do you decide. This is statically determined or indeterminate. You have to draw the free body diagram, draw the free body diagram, and then count how many unknown forces, how many reaction, how many equilibrium equation that you have, and then based on that you make conclusions. Remember, these are all problem with hinge joint. So when you have hinge joint, what you should do? These are all problem with hinge joint. There is a hinge joint there. For the case of uh, first question, so when you are asked to check, so this, you, you have to show this step here. So the first thing you have to draw the free body diagram. So this is a free body diagram that we draw for this problem. So because there is a hinge joint here, so we have to, in order to check statical indeterminacy, uh, statical determinacy, you have to make use of this hinge. So you separate this at the hinge into two parts, then draw the free body diagram for each part. So this is a fixed, so three reaction forces at the hinge joint, there are two internal forces. So this opposite direction, opposite direction means that if you know this, you know this. So don't count this as one, two, three, four. And this reaction forces roller and roller. So how many are, which is the number of unknown forces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So do not count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. Because if you know this, you know this. If you know this, you know that. So there are only two here. So seven, how many? Equilibrium equation, because you separate this into two, each part has three. So three multiply with two, you get six. So seven minus six, this is more than, R is more than this. Number of unknown forces, more than number of equilibrium equation that you have. So this becomes statically indeterminate. And the degree of statical indeterminacy is this one minus this, which is equal to one. So, in the progress of the part B and C, you have to go through these steps. You have to go through these steps. And it is important to, to show this and make conclusion. Because this is greater than this, so statically indeterminate. So, same thing, please do it for part uh, question 1B and 1C. Draw free body diagram, count how many unknown forces determine how many equilibrium equations that you have and make conclusions. And you have to make conclusions whether it's statically determinate or statically indeterminate. Any questions so far on this checking of statical determinacy? No questions? Now, I just want to remind you because sometimes uh, the previous year students make mistakes in the terms. So, this is statically indeterminate, okay? Not statically indeterminacy, statically, inde statically indeterminate, okay? So, when you write this, please write correctly the term. So, statically indeterminate. And it is not statically indeterminacy, not statical indeterminacy. So the terms, please use it correctly. Statically indeterminate or statically determinate. And this I here, I is the degree of statical indeterminacy. I is the degree of statical indeterminacy. Okay, the term, please get it right. And okay, it is called the degree, but please don't write one degree here. The name is called degree of statical indeterminacy, but it is not equal to the degree. So please don't write one and then put a small circle here, one degree, two degree. The name is called degree, but it is representing how many forces that you cannot solve. Mr. Solan, or any questions regarding this? So far, so good. That's good. Okay. 
So the rest, 1B, 1C, please complete, and then at the end, I will collect. Okay. I think if you search the net, I'm sorry, this one is not clear because this I downloaded from internet. This is uh, two weeks ago, I think this ship was finally standing up like this. It was, li it was lighting like this in somewhere in Italy for more than one year. And recently, two or three weeks, two weeks ago, I think it has an uh, operation to make this stand up was successfully carried out and these are the sequence of photos. So it is initially like this and then slowly, slowly, I think in the course of maybe more than 12 hours, the whole ship stand up. Now this is uh, how they actually do it. This is the, the basic idea. This is a basic idea. So this ship, because it's lying down on one side, so operation to, to, to make it straight up and then to send it up somewhere and then to scrap the whole thing as was planned and then they have to do this if not, if the ship is being left to disintegrate all those food inside the ship might come up and polluted the whole sea area. So the whole ship has to be lifted up in one piece. So this is the, the idea. First, you have to wrap this thing. This is a ship. So you have to put some kind like a cable to connecting this part and then anchor to somewhere on the, on the seashore. And you have to attach this thing, case on this, case on, is something like this, okay, like a box. It's like a box. It's like a box here, so you attach to this side here. And at the same time, they build something down here as a platform. Okay. There's a platform down here and anchor, anchor a cable from this case on to these supporting structures. And you pull this by pulling this, by pulling this slowly and this whole ship stand up like this. After this, you attach more case on on this side, you attach more case on on this side and initially these case on are filled with water to make it like a counterweight. It's like a weight just to stabilize the ship. And you release the water. After that, release the water inside the whole thing float. And the whole thing float, then it being towed away to some place and the whole ship will be scrapped. Okay. So this is a very, I think the only maybe, this is the first one in the world. I don't know, there will be the next one. So this for me is very, it's the concept is very simple. Of course, the operation involved is very complicated and it, it costs about 800, it costs about close to 800 million ringgit just to do this. Okay. So, now what I want you to do here is your assignment. Okay. Your assignment. This is your assignment. This is a very simple one. I think you can finish in one or two hours. These are the, these are the steps involved. These are the steps involved. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And these are some of the explanation there. This one I already uploaded on your e-learning. Your assignment 1A, this is draw a free body diagram of step two of the process of salvaging. So I want you to draw a free body diagram of this. Free body diagram of uh, showing, free body diagram of the, of this ship, okay? Free body diagram of this ship, so you have this part, this part, this cable, and this cable. This is uh, considered as a support. So draw a free body diagram of this step number two, okay? And then from there, show all the forces that acting on the ship. Any questions? You can get this on the e-learning. I already uploaded this. Some of these you can search on the internet. If you search Costa Concordia, you come out all this, uh, all these kind of images. These are not very clear uh, when you read through. The one that I uploaded maybe is clearer. Draw the free body diagram of this step number two. And the deadline, everything is already uh, indicated on the e-learning. Please check that. So this is the first one. Please submit according to the deadline. And this is just an exercise. 
to show you that, uh, to see how you draw the free body diagram. Okay. And from that free body diagram, we can also use that to estimate how much force is needed to pull the ship from lying down to standing up. Okay, so the detail is given on the e-learning, just uploaded, please check. And also the when you need to submit them. Please check your assignment and on, on the so the detailed instructions when to submit. All right. In the re now, in the remaining hours of this. Uh, the remaining minutes, about 20 minutes or so, what we want to actually look at solving a series of problems which is statically determinate. So by now you know what is statically determinate. So all the problems that we are going to solve in 253, they are all statically determinate problems. So what you need is, what you need for solving, they are only equilibrium equations. So we are going to look at, cover the main types, which are beam, frame, and arch. Beam, frame, and arch. So these are the examples that we are going to go through. And because this is statically determinant, so the solution of this mainly using basic principle of equilibrium. So because this is statically determinant, so all the forces that you need to know you can solve using only equilibrium equations. So the main steps, the main steps involved is first we want to check checking of statical determinacy. So to do this, you have to count how many unknown forces. So we need free body diagram. So the first step that we do is checking of statical determinacy, but we need to draw free body diagram. So this is where you make use of free body diagram and make sure the free body diagrams, they are drawn correctly. Then using the free body diagram, you write down the equilibrium equations. Summation of forces in x direction zero, summation of forces in y direction zero, summation of moment at any point zero. Then you solve. So that is basically the steps involved in solving all these statically determinate problems. So remember, only equilibrium equations is involved. A beam. This is a beam. So, and the characteristic of this problem is that you have an inclined support. The support is inclined. It is not look oriented horizontally, not vertically, but inclined. So this is a beam and we are going to look at also one frame problems, um, frame problems. This is a simple frame, this is fixed here, this is like a cantilever, it's free here, so only fixed here and these are the loading acting. And we have a more complicated problem, this is one span, two span, three span beam and you have internal hinges internal hinges here. So how to solve this? And you can also find what will be the, if you want to find the internal forces here and internal forces there, how do you solve this? And this is a very beautiful uh, diagram. Uh, this is colorful. This column is straight. Eh? This is you don't see this straight because of illusions, your optical illusions. This column is straight. These are all straight. If from your angle you don't see it straight, from here I see very straight. From there you cannot see because some angle problem. So if you stand here exactly at this box, very straight. This arrow also very straight. 
and all this also the color is black color. So this is another frame example that you look at and by using principle of equilibrium because this is statically determinate you should be able to calculate all the reaction force. And this is arch, three pin arch. Three pin arch is one of the topic that will be covered in ES253. It is statically determinate. So you can solve this although it is curved. And a little bit more complicated, this one involving a little bit more calculations, one span, two span, three span with the internal hinges here and there at within the same span. A bit more complicated, this is a frame and you have, this is a frame with inclined members, vertical members and with loading acting in perpendicular to the members, so how do you solve this? So this are the examples of problems that you should be able to solve by using only equilibrium equations. And some of the examples, if the support is different by, if the support, they are the same level, if you change the support level, what happens to the reaction forces? So these are the examples that we are going to look at. You shouldn't have any problem to solve this. The only thing that you have to be aware is this Inclinations. Inclination. So now inclinations meaning that how the supporting plane is inclined, how many degrees it makes with the horizontal surface. Here we are using the triangle here to indicate the inclinations. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of four three like this? Huh? This is triangle. So what is the meaning of four three? It indicates you the gradient of the support. When you walk four steps, then you are going to go up three steps. So it's something like that. So how do we make use of this in your calculations? So this is one thing that I would like you to pay attention to this problem. And of course, you have inclined load. How do you consider inclined load? So pay attention to this and this. The rest is a simpler problem that you shouldn't have any problem to solve. Okay? So, you have to be, get ready now, close your eyes and then you imagine the first step that you do, what do you do? The second step and then the third step. The purpose is to get the answer. Okay? So, we want to check statical determinacy. So, what do you do? The next, after you check statical determinacy, you have to write down equilibrium equations and then you solve. So, that is um, the steps that we go through. So always have that in mind and let's go through this. So statical determinacy, <coughs> we draw free body diagram. You draw free body diagram for, to check statical determinacy. So this is a free body diagram. So here is only, this is a roller support. So roller support only one reaction force. Okay, this is a roller support, so only one reaction force. This is a pin support, so you have two reaction forces. So this is the X and Y that is good to indicate X and Y at point B, B, Y, B, X. And this is, this is not A, this is not X and Y, so we indicate the reaction force at A. And how many unknown forces that we have? This one, R, A, B, X, B, Y, so three. How many equilibrium equations that we have? Three. So 3 equal to 3, unknown forces equal to number of equilibrium equations so statically <coughs> determinant. Okay, so this is checking is involving these steps. So you have to make conclusions. So when I ask you to check, the answer that I expect is you have to show this and then show how many reaction number of unknown forces, how many beta and make conclusion. Therefore, statically determined. Don't stop here and you ask me to make conclusion myself. Don't stop here. When you ask you to check statical determinacy, do not stop here. You have to give therefore statically determinant. Okay. So this is the steps. I think you know but please complete the steps. And here I want you to pay attention to this, this, this uh, triangle here. 
it is given to you in this way. This shows the inclination of this support, 4 and 3. Okay? And when we want to make use of this, because our reaction force is acting like this, in this direction, not in that direction. So when you want to, so when we make use of that information given to us, it become four here, three, and this four, three, five. You know this is Pythagoras theorem. Four, three, and five. You know this is five. So, okay. So this is this is the uh, the reason why we get four, three for this R A and not three, four. Three, four given to you is inclination of this of this supporting plane but your our reaction forces is acting like this not acting like that so that's why we need to find out if if we orientate these with respect to these directions so this one has to be this this side here okay this side has to be aligned with the direction of this ra and from there we get here is 4 here is 3 and only then we can make use of this triangle to find vertical component, horizontal component. So the vertical component will be Ra multiplied with 4 divided by 5. The horizontal of this will be Ra multiplied with 3 divided by 5. Understand these steps? So the inclination given is like this. But we make use of this triangle to find the component, component of RA in vertical and horizontal directions. But RA is not acting in this direction, it's acting in this direction, which is perpendicular to this direction. So we have to make use of this and to draw a triangle which is that we can use to find the vertical and horizontal component of RA. Okay. So, this is the, the use of this and make sure that uh, you, make, you make use of this correctly. Okay. So, this is a diagram that you need to understand properly. So, next we go to solve this problem, writing down equilibrium equation. Summation, we make use of the first equilibrium equations. The sequence that you want to use, summation of x, y, or moment is up to you. But you always try to find the equilibrium equations that you can solve directly the unknown forces. So in this case, I, if you take moment at this point, then Ra is passing through that point. There is no need to consider Ra. And Bx, is, Bx, the line of action, is passing through point A. No need to consider Bx. So if you use this equation, you find directly by. So we always try to identify which equilibrium equation that you want to use. You have only three anyway. Summation fx0, summation fy0, summation moment at any point zero. So which one you want to use is up, is up to you. At the end, if you do it correctly, you get the same answer. But if you can make use of the one that gives you directly, if you solve that, if you straight away direct the answer, then choose that one. So how do you know that? This one you need practice. You need to do a lot of practice. So normally, if you take moment at the correct point, we can solve this equation, get the reaction forces directly. One of the reaction force. So we take summation moment at A equal to zero. So I take counterclockwise as positive. You can also take clockwise as positive in this equation. So this means I take counterclockwise as positive. So by multiplied with this. So this is a moment minus six. Six is this. Six. This is clock, clockwise. That one become negative. Six five minus twelve sine sixty. So this is how you consider this. Twelve. Find the vertical component. Twelve sine sixty. Multiply with ten. And this is clockwise, that's why it becomes negative. You go to zero, you get this. The horizontal component we don't consider. Why? The horizontal component of this we don't consider. Why? 
because uh, the horizontal component, the line of action is passing through A, so it doesn't cause any moment. So we only consider the vertical component. So you find BY, you assume BY going up, so you get positive means your assumption is correct. If you assume going down, is you also can assume going down, but you will find you get answer negative. So that means your assumption is wrong of the directions. So this is the first one. The second one is after that, you have you make use of this second equilibrium equation. Summation of force in y direction equal to zero. So now this is where you make use of this triangle. So I assume going up as positive. So the vertical component of RA is going up. So RA multiplied with 4 divided by 5. 4 over 5, this is a component vertical upwards minus 12 sine 60 downwards. That's why negative plus BY assume positive upwards minus 6 equal to 0. So you find the answer. You assume that the reaction here is pointing in this direction. You get positive, meaning the direction that you assume is correct. So you use two equilibrium equations. Now the last one is to find Bx. So make use of this. So Bx, I assume going to the right, is positive. So Ra multiplied with 3 over 5. You get the, vert the horizontal component of this going there. 12 cos 60 is the horizontal component of this load going there. So negative plus Bx, you assume is going there. You assume this is going there, you get positive, so the assumption is correct. So indicate the direction correctly at, uh, in the answer. Indicate the direction correctly in the answer. If you get negative, if you get negative, then indicate the answer Bx is equal to the positive value and the correct directions. So because force is a vector, so magnitude and direction is important. So, this is the answer. And to finally, to do some checking, this is not necessary in the steps, but in order to prove that your answer is correct, then you can do some checking. Normally, checking we take moment at, at one point, at some other point. You already take moment at point A, to do checking, don't take moment at point A again. Take moment at other points. Yeah? For do checking, summation of moment at C. I want to take moment at C. C, what is C? C is here. A. Uh. Oh, where is C? So it's uh, summation moment. Okay. 12 sine 65 by. I think C is here. Okay. This summation moment at C here. So this one. Ra 4 over 5. So Ra 4 over 5 is the vertical component of this multiplied with this distance which is 25 minus this 12 sine 60, 15 plus 5 by. Then you should get very close to zero. You cannot get zero. I think because of some uh, round, out, round off error, you will, get, you will not get zero. But this is already considered very close to zero. So you should get very close to zero. If you, if you get negative 45, positive 10, then something wrong with the calculations. So this is uh, not necessary in, in uh, one of the solution steps, but this is for you to check. If you want to check your answer, or if you are asked to check answer, then this is a step needed. But this is normally not needed in the solution process. I included here is to show to you that if your answer is correct, then if you take moment at other points, it should give you almost zero. Okay. Any question on this part? So this is uh, this question is given to you three and four. Not necessarily all the time three four. This could be one three two two point five two two. It depends on the problem. Here three four is because easy to calculate three four five here. Not necessarily all the time three four. It can be two five four four six five. You have class after this? Oh, don't tell me you have class after this. I thought your class already changed. Uh, you told me the class changed, that's why. Then you won't. Huh? Huh? You have what class after this? EAT. Oh. 
EAT, which level? 100. Already 200 level, EAT. Okay. Okay. So now, what we have gone through today is, I finished off with the basic, and we introduced the concept of statical determinacy. Okay, that is, how do you check, how do you classify a problem statically determinate or statically indeterminate? And we look at how we check them, the process that need to go through. And also, finally, we solve, we start solving problems and by applying principle of equilibrium. All the problems that you are going to solve are statically determinate. So only equilibrium equations are needed when you want to solve the forces.